Here is another example using kinematics equation. Let's read the question. An aircraft initially stationary on a runway takes off with a speed of 85 km per hour. Okay, probably going to have to put an exclamation point. Maybe some conversion needed. Okay, with a distance of no more, oh, no more than 1.2 km. What is the minimum constant acceleration necessary for the aircraft? Okay, so let's think about the runway. Let's say this is the runway. And then you have your aircraft here. I'm not very good at drawing aircraft. So let's say this is our aircraft with the wheels. <laughs> okay, so your aircraft with a really gigantic wheels. I'm going to start with uh, initial speed zero. So this is my U. Okay, it's going to travel this way. And after that, we will accelerate A such that at the end of the runway, at the end of the runway, my, my little aircraft, okay, will have a speed to take off. This speed must be 85 km per hour. Okay, so at U equal to zero here. And then getting ready to go. By the time it lifts off, phew, it must go at 85 km per hour. We know there's a distance in the runway. It says that the runway distance is 1.2 km. So if you don't accelerate large enough, what will happen is you won't hit your takeoff speed. That is why they say no more than 1.2 km. Okay, so this is the maximum allowed speed for you to accelerate. So I guess there are a few ways to do this. Maybe I can show you how to use the Stuva, Stuva equation. Stuva. I, like, I like Stuva more. Bookshelf from IKEA. So before I insert in, I have to make sure a few things are. Number one, uh, everything I convert to SI. Miss really need me. You look at all the answer here. All SI, right? Meter per second. So you convert la. So this will be 1002. Okay. I'm looking for the minimum acceleration. So put a question mark here. Final speed is 85 km per hour. I will convert this uh, initial speed is 0. Time is irrelevant. They didn't ask you to find time. So what to do? Okay, first things first, I'm going to convert. 85 km per hour. I want to change it to meter per second. How to change? Uh? Well, I have this technique. Uh, I do this. Okay, so I ask myself, hmm, what unit do I want? Miss, I don't want km. I want meter. Yes, correct. So then for this red bracket to be legit, I need to multiply by 1. So then I'm thinking to myself, kilo is 10 to the power of 3. Right? Kilo is 10 to the power of 3. So this means 1 km and 10 to the power of 3 meter are the same thing. So you're multiplying by 1. So it's okay. All right? We're going to repeat the process again. But now for hour, what expression do you not want? You want to put your hour here. Why? Because at the end of the day, hour and hour can cancel. Bye-bye. Ah. And then you ask yourself, what unit do I want? Oh, I want second. So I put second here. Then I ask myself, hmm, one hour is how many seconds? 60 times 60. So that will be 3600 second. So when I'm doing this, by doing this, my km and km can cancel. My hour and hour can cancel. Then what is left? I will have 85 times 10 to the power of 3 meter divided by 3600 second. So I already have my meter per second. Very good. Okay, so a shortcut here would be 85 divided by 3.6. Okay, because 1036 meter per second. What is this? Let's press calculator. Reply divided by 3.6. This is 23.6 meter per second. So there's kind of like a shortcut here. If you want to convert from km per hour to meter per second, you will divide by 3.6. If you convert back, you multiply by 3.6. Okay, but this is how I got 3.6 in the first place. Lah. So it's either you know this or you just start from scratch. Lah. I don't remember, I don't memorize one. 
I do this. Okay. So right now we already have this uh, 85 km per hour. I can change it to 23.6 meter per second. So step one, done. Step two, choose equation. So when I choose equation, no t. Which equation got no t? V square is u square plus 2as. Miss, the four equation I have to remember. Okay. Which four equation are we talking about again? We are talking about V is U plus AT. S is half U plus V times T. Okay. And uh, S is equal to UT plus half AT square. And also uh, V square is U square plus 2AS. So, new splash. This last two equation is given in your question paper. So if you're doing paper 1 or paper 2 or paper 4, this one is only relevant to paper 1 and 2, lah, you will be given this equation. Okay? This two is not given. You might be wondering, Miss, why don't they just give all four? Well, the first two is consider property of the graph. Lah. That means they expect you to know that gradient and area should give you velocity and displacement respectively. So that one no need. Okay? So familiarize yourself. Then you will no need to go and refer. Can memorize. Can familiarize one. Okay? So V square is U square plus 2AS. And uh, I'm going to substitute the equation in. So this will be 23.6 square is equal to 0 plus 2A 12,000. So from here, I can find my A. Lo. Oh, draw a line here to separate them. 23.6 square divided by 2 divided by 1, 2, oh, oh. I got 0 0.232 meter per second square. Let's check on answers. So 0 0.23, the answer is A. Okay? So in, in the end, right, you really have to read and understand the question, okay? And make sure you convert your units. When you read and understand the question, make sure that you are clear that the acceleration is constant. In this case, we know it's constant because it says here, minimum constant acceleration, okay? So some of you may be thinking, Miss, can I use graph? Graph can, can, can. I show you the graphical method now, okay? So, or... Use graphs. Because don't forget, the equation comes from graph. So graph always confirm can one. So it says here that um, this is VT. Okay. So we're going to accelerate from zero. And I don't know what my final velocity is. Do I know? Did they tell me? Oh, yes, they did. 23.6. Okay. So I want to reach the 85 kilometer per hour. Or... 23.6. Don't know what the time is, but I know the area. The area of this graph, this graph all, must be 1.2 km. So area must be equal to 1200. Okay, can you find T? Because once you find T, you can find gradient, and gradient is the acceleration. So, step A. I know area is displacement. So, 1, 2, 0, 0 will be equal to half. Looks like a triangle to me, right? 23.6 multiplied by T. So, from here, we can find T. 2, 4, 0, 0 divided by 23.6. This will be... Oh, 100 point, 101 second. Okay. B, acceleration. Gradient is equal to acceleration. Gradient of BT, la. okay. Maybe I'll write a title here. For BT graphs. All right. So gradient is equal to A. From here, if I want to find the gradient, I'll take 23.6, the height, divided by the... 101.7. So 23.6 divided by answer 
will be equal to 0 0.232. So the benefit of using graph is that you are dealing with something familiar, especially if you come from the IGCSE syllabus. You sketch out the graph to represent the scenario. Airplane is going to accelerate constant. Let's say this is the minimum acceleration, meaning just nice after traveling 1,002 meter, it will reach 23.6. Okay, so once you sketch out the graph, you can find what you need to find. But the not so good thing about this is you need to find time. So the efficiency of the question is such that if you use your Stuva equation, you can directly have an equation that we already substituted the time away, you can find acceleration directly. But if let's say you want to use the VT graph, also can. It's always good to know two methods like this, that way you can always double check your answer, check answer. Okay, so that's it for this example. We'll try more questions.